Hello everyone, my name is Pedro Figueiredo. I'm a software engineer at Single Store. I'm 26 years old. I'm from Leiria, Portugal. I work as a software engineer for about four years now, and I've mainly been working in the front end side of the web. Uh, today we will be talking about model augmentation in TypeScript. We will go for a, a bunch of topics like uh, what is model augmentation exactly, how does TypeScript picks up on our types, what can model augmentation do for us, and uh, go through some actual examples of libs that uh, actually rely on model augmentation to make their types work. So, to get things started, I think it is really important for us to understand what's going on when we import a lib. So once uh, you write this uh, kind of statement, import lib from lib, the TS compiler is going to first try to figure out where, if the types are in this lib.ts file. And after that, is also going to try to figure out if the types are inside this lib.d.ts file. So the first one, it's kind of easy. It's the TypeScript file of the lib. You kind of all know that. The second one, it's the definitions file of the lib. So it is a file that only has uh, types, so type definitions, and it has the overall schema of the lib in terms of types. Now, awesome. why is it uh, so important that TypeScript looks for this also? So many of the libs that we are using today are only JavaScript. So, and even though they are only JavaScript, if we use them in TypeScript, we can still get a lot from their types. How is this even possible? That's because of this thing over here. Uh, and now you might be wondering, if they are only JavaScript, where is this uh, .d, .ts file coming from? And that's uh, the magic of def definitely type. So definitely type is this uh, huge repository that has thousands and thousands of uh, type definitions for JavaScript libs. And uh, you probably have seen it around uh, whenever you install like add types slash something. So I can give you a quick example. Whenever you install React these days, let's say you do npm install into your project, and then you try to import something in a TypeScript file, you will have an error on the top saying, oh, you probably missed the, the add types slash React, and that one is coming from the definitely type repository where they have countless projects just with the types for the JavaScript libs. So a little bit more about this repository. It is a community-driven effort. It is uh, one of the main repositories in the TypeScript ecosystem. Many, many repos out there rely on it. And uh, the type definitions there, uh, they are said to be, they have really high quality and really high standards. But as you know, in software engineer, there is this very known phrase, which is, it depends. So it depends on your use case. Sometimes it won't be good enough for you. Sometimes because uh, the, <coughs> the lib is going too fast and the guys on the definitely type repo can't build the types so fast, so you might have the lib on a version seven as this case, and the types might be on a version six, and then everything is breaking and you know, we are JavaScript or TypeScript developers. We always want, want to use the latest versions of everything. So that might be a problem. The second problem is, obviously, there are a lot of requests from the community. Maybe I want different types, dip, different types from the ones that are currently being uh, used. And I make a request. But the, the guys over there are like, mm, I don't really like that. So we won't go through with it. And then you might end up like this guy that asked for something in 2014 for some random package in jQuery, and maybe he's still waiting. Not, not ideal. Awesome. So what can we do in these situations? So that's where model augmentation comes in real helpful. So model augmentation is this thing that allows you to extend the types of a lib without touching the lib's code at all. So I think a really cool example is Let's say you have React components, and you want to say, oh, I want all my React components to have a property, which is layout. But of course, if you try to do this and pull up a pull request to the React repo, they will tell you, are you crazy? You are obviously not going to do that. So you must do this in a way that you don't touch the repo at all, and you can still augment the types. So let's look, take a look on how could we do that really quickly. 
So here we are saying all our function components will have a layout property. And how can we do that real quickly? We create a definitions file called usually react.d.ts. You can make it in a TypeScript file, but I think it's way better for semantics that you do it in a .d.ts file. And then the second thing, which is really important, is you must have either an export or an import inside this file. If you don't, everything that you're going to write below will override all the types of React. So if you didn't have this, all the types of the React package would be this uh, function component over here. Second thing, you say declare model React. What do you put in here, you ask? You put in here the same thing that you are importing in your files. So if you say import something from React, then it's React. If you say import something from style components, that you put, you put style components there. It's basically the path from, what, from where you access the, the model. Once you are inside these brackets, it's like you are inside React's code base. So you kind of have access to their variables, actually only their types. And the code that you do in here, it's like it's being wrote there. Kind of magic. So then what we are going to do is we are going to add the type definitions that we want. And we are going to say function component. It will have a layout, and that layout will be of the type string. And this seems kind of magical. What are we doing? Are we just saying we're using this function component? This is something that already exists in React. Are we overriding? What are we really doing here? So under the hood, TypeScript is doing a bunch of questions. The first thing that he is going to ask is, is this a model? If this is not a model, basically if it doesn't have any export or import, is going to say, OK, those are my final types. Everything that is, there, is in there are my final types for the lib. OK, but if this is a model, what happens then? In this case, it was a model. So it is going to ask, does the declared model already exist? Because it is going to look up for, is there another React in this repo, in this code base? And if it does not exist, again, it goes down below and says, OK, then this, these are my final types. Everything that is in there are the types for this uh, React lib. And that's it. That's final. Although if there, are, if, there are a model, if there is a model with that name, it's going to do something very core and very fundamental to model limitation, which is called declaration merging. And what is that? So declaration merging, in the end, that's what it says in TypeScript docs. It says uh, it's basically merging two separate declarations by their name. So it picks up on uh, two things that have the same name, two interfaces in this case. And if they are inside the same model, it's going to merge them together. So it's really simple. If you look at this box over here, you got a box with height and width. And you got a second box just with scale. And this is the same thing if you, as if you just wrote one box with the three things together. And that's like that because it has the same name. That's the, the only reason why he's merging them. So this is pretty much just the, the algorithm of declaration merging right there. So declaration merging, it's kind of limited. It has a lot of caveats in the sense that uh, it will only work for interfaces, namespaces, and enums, but mostly you will only do this with interfaces. And uh, it does not allow the adding of new properties. It only allows, sorry, the adding of new properties. So you can't really override anything. So let's look at this example over here. Uh, if you try to do the same thing with a type, it will have an error. Anything will there will be merged. You will only be able to use, I think, the, the first box over there. The last one will be like forgotten. And uh, on the second uh, case, you are tr we are trying to actually change that to be a string instead of a number. And this won't work either because we are actually trying to modify the, the interface. And that's not possible. So going back all the way through, once you have this code going of uh, adding the layout to a function component, we can then do. Uh, assign the function component to a component and say my component dot layout and everything will work fine because we did what we called before the merging declaration. This function component already existed in the React lib and we just uh, laid it here again and we added the new layout property and that's it. 
Easy enough. Awesome. So what I showed in here seems kind of simple and doesn't look like it has many, it won't do that much for us, but there are libs that actually rely heavily on this to have TypeScript support. And one of them is uh, style components. So Winier knows style components. Okay, a bunch of people have used it. It is a, like a CSS and JS uh, kind of library. And uh, this was built uh, around 2016. And around that time, uh, people were crazy and were not using TypeScript. Uh, and uh, yeah, obviously they didn't uh, make a good architecture of thinking we would need to provide types in the near future. They weren't even thinking about that. Uh, and eventually TypeScript gained a lot of traction and obviously they wanted also to provide some nice types. So they started thinking, okay, we need to provide some types, but our architecture doesn't work quite well with TypeScript. What can we do without changing our code too much to provide types? Well, that's exactly the definition of model augmentation. They change the types without changing a single line of code. So how do they do this? It is quite smart, actually. If you read in the style components talks, they have this phrase saying TypeScript definitions for style components can be extended by declaration merging, what we just saw before. So this is the, not really, but this is a simplistic thing uh, that is uh, in their repo. They have this empty interface saying default theme, it is empty, and then they say the type of art theme is a default theme. So they, once you install style components, you have a, a theme whose type is empty, is nothing, is any, basically. But then, what they also have on their docs is, okay, you have, want to have a type theme, then you do model augmentation, and you just go ahead, you declare default theme again, and uh, that is exactly declaration merging, and you put whatever you want in there. And once you do this, that's it. You have a type theme, and then you can, start accessing border radius, colors, and all the colors in there in a pretty safe way and simple way. And also for bonus points, if you, after this, want to be a good open source contributor, you can go ahead and uh, change this comment over here because they say you need to import original model declar <laughs> declarations, but actually you just need to put an export, empty export in there, that is a, a wrong comment, uh, or just import anything, it doesn't really matter. It just makes a, a model. Awesome. But then there is also this question that people make, which is that this kind of limited. I need something very custom for my project. I really need to override the types that the lib is giving me. How can I do that? Can model augmentation help me? Well, not really, but there are similar things that you can do, although any of them is quite, quite clear. So one of the things that we, that we could do is actually fork that repo of the leaves that we want to change, and then just use it at, as a dependency. People have used this for many other reasons also, and as you can see, it has many disadvantages, like the lib is going forwards and you are stuck with this fork over here, so it's not that good. Uh, the second thing, as I told you, is you can just declare the model, and if you don't have any imports or exports in there, this will be all the types there is for React. So what you do, because you want to have all the types that existed before is you copy everything, you paste the 1,000 or 1 million lines in here, and then you just change whatever you want. And this will be all the types of React. As you see, this is not too manageable. The third way, and also not, not too clean, but in my opinion, this is still the best way, uh, is a two, two, it has two steps, basically. So the first step, let's say we want to change one type in a poll. The first step would be you create in your TypeScript uh, config, you create a new path saying private Apollo is this path which was the old one, which is in node models very somewhere. And what this means is that uh, you can import private Apollo and will be the same as importing Apollo. But this will be like a private dependency that we won't use in our project. The second thing is you'll create a new definitions file and you will export everything that you had before from Apollo, from this private Apollo, same as Apollo. So all the types that already existed. And once after that, you just change whatever you want. And this way, we still have the old types and you can still override everything you wanted after that. 
Awesome. So just a little summary of what we have seen. Uh, whenever you can, please just use whatever there is indefinitely typed, or if there isn't yet that bright thing that you want, do a PR, CR the community responses, and just in the last case, use a model augmentation. Uh, it is indeed possible to modify types without touching a code base. Um, declaration merging is the core of all that we have seen here. And uh, model augmentation isn't the holy grail of anything because it is kind of limited. Uh, that is it, folks. It's time for QA. Awesome. So yeah. I have a question. Um, would you say that in an ideal world we wouldn't need definitely typed? Uh, so everyone would be building their hybrid script type script and we wouldn't need at types? Yeah. Or do you think there's like an advantage to having no. that? Uh, uh, yeah, I think the, the, the big advantage, it's kind of obvious, is there are a lot of developers that uh, they want to create great uh, developer experience with great uh, type definitions, but great type definitions are maybe a little too complex in libs. So these great developers have these ideas and know how to do things, but sometimes because they don't know enough about TypeScript, they just want to focus on JavaScript and still have their work done, and they have other persons doing the type work on the side. That's, the, I don't know, from the top of my head, that's the only reason I see to to have that. Other than that, I think it's really nice if you just build uh, a lib with TypeScript from the beginning and uh, yeah, it will be easier to develop and it will be easier to do the types because you are already architecturing it that way, to have types from the beginning. Awesome. Uh, there is no more questions, just some notes. This is my social media. In here you can find the, the slides. And also, Single Store, if you haven't seen it, is one of the sponsors of the, this require Alex uh, session. And uh, we are hiring Portugal. So just go over there and take a look. Thank you. <laughs>